my name is Kristen and this is Kristen Craves Books. Today I'm here with my April TBR and I'm so excited just to have a month where I kind of mood read. Obviously I'm setting this TBR. These are the books that are calling to me at the moment. But there's no readathons. I'm not doing any challenges. I have a couple book club reads but nothing major. But after Realmathon, which I had so much fun co-hosting, shout out to Cassidy for asking me to do that. I am feeling the burnout because I don't think I have ever read so much in a month in my entire life. You will hear more about that in my next video, but I just need to chill. And now that it finally feels like spring, I think we're done with the snow. We had snow last week, but from what I can tell, it's finally over. I just want some lighter books. I just want to read some romanticy, some contemporary romance, things that just scream spring to me, some cozy fantasy maybe. So this is a stack that I have right now I will make my way through and I will be delighted to do that because I just need some joy <laughs> and these all make me happy just looking at them. So first of all I have two books to talk about for the Black Hat Book Coven because I haven't read the March book yet. I am hosting the live show on my channel on April 7th and the book is Gravebriar by Casey Albond. I just wanted to put it off so I could read it closer to the live show because I am hosting the discussion and I want the content to be fresh in my mind so I'm starting that today and I am hearing mixed things from the co-hosts of the book club. One seems to love it, the other one doesn't. I'm not sure about Laura's thoughts on it yet but it'll be interesting to see what I think that one is supposed to be compared to Caravelle and Casey Albond is an Apollycon author. If you're going to that you can still have time to join us and read along and discuss with us on Sunday. The April book is The House Witch, which I have been dying to read. I didn't realize just how long it was when Becky chose it, so I'm kind of like mad at her for that because that is such a long book and we were all giving her a hard time. But it does look really good and I know it's probably on a lot of your TBRs or you have read it already because it's an indie or self-published book that really got a lot of attention and there's a few sequels out at this point. So if you have read that or you want to read it, April is the time leans into that cozy fantasy thing that I want. Obviously witchy, that is the intention of the book club. So join us for that. I am really looking forward to it. Let me look at the length of the audiobook because I was looking at the audiobook and I couldn't believe how long it was. Let me just confirm before I give Becky too hard of a time. The House Witch. Okay, 17 hours. Not terrible considering I just read The Will of Many and that was 28. So I take it back a little bit. I take it back a little bit. It's not too, too long. And yeah, there are a couple sequels out already. So it's a humorous romantic fantasy. Exactly what I said I'm in the mood for. So I'm excited about that one. And if you followed Ramathon at all, you will know Tori from Tori Between Pages, who I adore. And I have participated in her book club a couple times. She has a book club on Fable called Who Did This To You? Book Club, which I think is hilarious. And when she first started it, I did the first couple books, but I'm so bad with keeping up with book clubs and I kind of fell off. But being a co-host with her during Ramathon reminded me that I really loved that book club. But her April book is one I've been dying to read, so it's a perfect excuse. This is like the book of the moment. It is a fantasy romance everybody's talking about. And this is Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli. Now from the UK, it's called Crimson Moth. So I'll leave a link to Tori's book club down below. It's just a free app that you have to download and it's broken down into chapters so you can discuss as you read which I really really love and obviously I will link Tori's channel but this is a romance between a witch and a witch hunter which after reading Serpent and Dove, just the first book, I only like the first book, I realized I love that setup and this is says her deadliest enemy or her greatest love. So you know you're getting enemies to lovers in this one. I've been hearing great things. Enemies to lovers doesn't get more high stakes than a witch and a witch hunter falling in love. That about sums it up. So can't wait to get to this one and discuss it with everybody in that book club. Then I have a physical arc. I've had this for a couple months now and I have been dying to read it but it comes out in May so I figured I would save it for April to read closer to release date and get you all hyped about it. And this is Evocation by S.T. Gibson, obviously the author of A Diary of Blood. This one is not connected to that world at all. This is the start of a new series from her. It says, when a family curse threatens the life of David, a medium, he will turn to the only person he's ever trusted, his sorcerer ex-boyfriend, Reese, which means he will have to open his heart to Moira, Reese's astrologer wife. Meet David, Reese, and Moira for the first time as they navigate magic-riddled Boston through hierarchical secret societies, familial bonds from beyond the grave, and much more in this gorgeously, richly imagined novel. is out May 28th. And look at this arc, it's the most beautiful thing ever. So shout out to Angry Robot Books for that. And obviously just like S.T. Gibson, I really need to read this and get my thoughts out to you on that one. So 
I will obviously talk about it in a wrap up. I might even vlog it. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. I do want to get back into vlogging and something with the sun and the thought of summer gets me excited about vlogging again. So I might do that one, but I will definitely have a Goodreads review up for it at some point as well. So just can't wait to be back with SD Gibson's writing and to see what she does with a new series. Something about the Celestial Kingdom series from Sulin Tan screams spring to me. And that was just a duology, so I thought we were done with that. I didn't think I had another opportunity to read a book in that series in spring. But then she put out this short story collection. This is Tales from the Celestial Kingdom. And it's just a series of short stories from before, during, and after the events of the original duology. And Kelly Chong is one of my favorite illustrators. And she does illustrations throughout this entire thing. I don't want to show you them all because I think that's part of the charm of this one, but they're just riddled throughout this and I can't wait to experience it. This cover alone just screams spring. Normally I don't read short story collections within a series, but there's something about this series that's special to me. I know it's not for everybody and I understand the reasons for that, but it just works for me. And there's like blossoms on here. Just, just looking at this brings me joy. And what, it'll take me an afternoon to read this, if that, and it will be delightful. I know I will enjoy every second of that. Here's one that I've been saving for spring, but it's been recommended to me personally so many times. I don't know how I never heard of this when it came out. I think 2007 it came out and I was just graduating high school. Does that tell you how old I am at this point? But I wasn't reading for fun as much back then. And so I missed this one, Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen who is an author I've heard a lot about, who I think I will probably love. This seems to be cozy. It's in a garden surrounded by a tall fence, tucked away behind a small house in the smallest of towns. It's an apple tree, rumored to bear a very special sort of fruit. In this luminous debut novel, Sarah Addison Allen tells the story of that enchanted tree and that extraordinary people who tend to it. Oh, sounds dreamy just from that. And I think a lot of you understand my reading taste at this point and have told me I desperately need to read this and you're never wrong. So I trust you all and I promise I will get to it in April. It just seems like an April book to me. Speaking of spring covers, I don't think it gets more spring than this. This is Ready or Not by Kara Bastone. Now this is Surprise Pregnancy, which is not a trope I love, but a lot of people have said they don't love that trope, but love this one. And I think the reason that it probably works is because we as a reader go into it knowing that there's a surprise pregnancy. A lot of time that trope just kind of sneaks up on us and we're not prepared, but that's what this whole book is about. So it says a surprise pregnancy leads to even more life-changing revelations. So I just think it's about a slow burn friends to lovers romance. And this woman, she's from Brooklyn. She doesn't love change, but she realizes that she is pregnant. She has a complicated relationship with the father. And I think she has a romance with her best friend's brother. And he's very supportive and sweet. So I've just heard that this is really heart warming and charming and I trust the people who have said even if you don't love the surprise pregnancy trope that you have to try this one and again spring vibes and I just need some contemporary romance in my life. Unless you follow me in Goodreads or you were on the reading sprints throughout the month of March you probably don't know this but I read The Bridge Kingdom and The Traitor Queen by Daniel L. Jensen in March. Absolutely adored it. One of my top fantasy series so far but there are two more books in this series. It's one of those things where the first two books follow a, diff a couple, then the second book, two books follow a different couple, that kind of thing. And just in case you didn't know, they are available on Audible Plus. So I want to read books three and four in April because I loved the first two so much. I've heard mixed things. Some people, I think Cassidy said that the third book is her favorite. My friend Maria from Maria might read that. And Kristen from Kristen's Fully Booked, the third one wasn't their favorite. We'll see where I fall with that one, but it does have more of a de desert setting, which I tend to like. We'll just see, but I loved the first two. And I read Daniel L. Jensen's new book in March too. So it's a year of Daniel L. Jensen for me apparently and I can't complain about that. This next one is a contemporary romance. I have an audiobook from Libro FM. Now Lynn Painter hasn't always been a successful author for me. I loved one book by her, but just never my favorite. But this one I've been hearing good things about and I like the premise of it. It's called Happily Never After. And I just love the tagline of this. It says their name, the objector, is their job to break off weddings as hired. Their dilemma, they might just be in love with each other. So it's about these two people and they are hired to go to weddings and to object. And as they're doing this, they fall in love. And I think she is very much a hater of love. She doesn't believe in love and Obviously, I think there's probably going to be some miscommunication or he's pining over her but can't say anything about it because she is anti-love. We'll see how, if 
I can stand that for too long. And one thing I love in a contemporary romance is when it's centered around a wedding. I've had a lot of success with books like that, so I'm hopeful about this one. And it's just something different. I've heard of bridesmaids for a hire where you can hire a bridesmaid if you don't have enough people to stand with you or whatever but never objectors and I love the idea of that that'll add some drama so that is one I want to read as well and then the last one for sure and then leave some room for mood reading it's an audiobook that I'm currently listening to but I had to stop because I desperately need to read Greyfriar first but I have an ALC of Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Winswell and this comes out in April at some point and it's everything that I know I'm gonna love. This is cozy fantasy, but also with monsters. And our main character is a shapeshifter who is being hunted. And in the beginning couple chapters that I read, the action happens right away and she's on the run. And she kind of like builds herself into this human using like a bear trap as her mouth and body parts <laughs> that are around her because she eats humans, that kind of thing. And she runs into a woman who saves her because she thinks that our main character is also human. And they have a sapphic love story. Even though the love interest hates the shapeshifter and thinks that the shapeshifter cursed her family and is on the hunt for it. So, I'm into it. That sounds so much fun. I've had people who've read it already tell me I'm gonna love it. They love it. And I'm just here for the vibes of that. It sounds so different than anything else I've ever read. And I can already tell from the first couple chapters. It is so my vibe. So those are the books on April TBR. I can't wait to read all of those. Like I'm really excited about my TBR this month. Let me know what you plan to read in April. If you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. As always, thank you for your support. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.